All right, guys, so welcome to another lecture on Chapter 7, Radical Expression. Today we we'll go over Section 7.7, .7, adding, subtracting, and multiplying radical expressions. All right, so uh, on the previous, just to recap the previous three uh, sections, the first section was the defined roots, right? Like the square root, the cube root, the four root, etc., the nth root. On the second section, we, will, we were playing back and forth between radical form and rational exponent form on the on the previous section that is 7.3 we were looking at the product rule and the quotient rule to simplify radical expression today we are going to do algebraic operations on radical expressions right and those again they are addition subtraction and multiplication there's another one called division that is really um rationalizing denominator but that's a topic we don't cover anymore for this class right so this is the end this is going to be the end of chapter seven all right let's go over the first topic here okay adding and subtracting radical expressions okay adding and subtracting like radicals what are like radicals like radicals are radicals that have the same radicand and the same index, right? Just the same way we work with like terms. Remember like terms when we went over the polynomials chapter, right? When we added 3x plus 4x, right? These are like terms because they have the same variable, right? And it's raised to the same power. In this case, the power is one, an invisible one there, right? So we, all we do is add the coefficient, three plus four equals seven, and we just keep writing the variable, right? Five y squared plus nine y squared, right? So these are like terms, right? Because we have the same variable, right? And both variables are raised to the same power. So all we do is 5 plus 9 equals 14 and just keep the variable term y squared, okay? All right, so the same thing with radicals, right? So let's look at a few examples to illustrate this, right? So Let's look at letter A. Okay, so the instructions is, if possible, add the expressions and simplify, if possible. All right. Okay. Uh, notice here you have, we have the square root of 5, right? We also have the square root of 5. We have both the same index and the same radicand. The radicand is a number inside of the radical symbol, right? And all we do here is just add the numbers 2 plus 7 equals 9 and just keep writing the square root of 5, all right? And that's about it. That's all we do. The next one, we have square root of 10, square root of 10, and square root of 10, all right? So, what about it? All right, so in this case, these radicals that are highlighted with purple, they both have the same radicand and the same index. That's why these are going to be like radicals. So all we do just add the numbers 3 plus 7, that is 10, and then minus 5, that's going to be 5, and just write the cube root of 10. Okay, and that's final answer. Is this as easy as this? Yes, as easy as adding, like we did before, as adding 3x plus 4x equals 7x. The same way now, in this case, we have radical expressions, right? All right, let's look at letter C. And again, it is the case that we have, for these two radicals I'm highlighting in green, both of them have the same index and the same right hands all right so in this case all we do is add the numbers 5 plus 9 that's 14 square root of 2x that's it what about letter d however well notice the first term 
doesn't have a radical term, right? As opposed to the second term has a radical term. In this case, this is already simplified. There's nothing we can do any further. Maybe factor out the two, but we don't need to, right? So all we get the same two. I mean the same 12 plus 2 root of 6. There's nothing to do there. That's about it. All right. Okay, what about letter E? Okay. So look at the indices of the radicals right here. Here we have a square root. Here we have a square root. So, so far we have both radicals with the same index. However, one of them, the radicand is... 3 and for the other one the radicand is 10 so in this case because the numbers inside of the radicals do not match these are not like radicals and therefore we still keep the same right we get the same there's nothing else to keep simplifying all right okay all right now, what about when we subtract unlike radicals? Okay, can we do the following? Um, 4 plus 1, which is 5 minus 1, that is going to be 4. And then do we do this? 3 plus 12, that's 15 minus 27. 15 minus 27, is that a 12? No, that's not correct. That's not what we do. Okay. So that's what you are not supposed to do. Let me erase it so you don't get confused about this. All right. So what are we going to do over here? Okay, notice the first radical, right? Square root of 3, it's already in simplest form, right? So there's nothing we can do about it, right? We, we are going to leave that one alone. Okay. Now, observe the number inside of the parentheses, I mean inside of the radical, right, of the second term. So that is a 12 and also observe the number inside of the third radical, all right? Notice none of these are perfect squares, so we can just evaluate the root. The, in this case, we are gonna do exactly the same as what we did on the previous section, right? So in this case, notice there is an invisible two, right? There is an invisible 2 and there is an invisible 2. That is, we're looking for perfect squares, all right? So when we look for perfect squares, right, we're looking for a factor of 12 that is a perfect square and a factor of 27 that is a perfect square, right? 4 times 3 equals 12 and 9 times 3 equals 27. We did, a, we did a bunch of this on the previous section. If you still have questions on how to do this, I suggest you watch, you watch the previous video on section 7.3. So I'm still going to do that. I'm going to show you the same the, the steps the same way. Okay, so 4 times the cube root of, I mean, the square root of 3 plus the square root of 4 times 3 minus the square root of 9 times 3, okay? So that's um, the factor form. Now, in just the same way we did it on the previous section, I'm going to highlight with green only the factors that have perfect square root, and I'm going to, to highlight with purple all those factors that are not perfect squares, right? And I'm going to break up this product of two quantities inside of the radical as our, the product of two radicals. So 4 times the square root of 3, all right, plus square root of 4 times the square root of 3, okay, minus the square root of 9 times the square root of 3, okay. So what are we going to do here? Let's evaluate the perfect square roots, the perfect square roots, and do not touch because we cannot simplify that any further. So 4 root of 3 plus the square root of 4, which is 2 root of 3 minus 3 root of 3. All right. Now notice we have now 
the same radical with the same index. Now we have like radicals, right? So what did we do? We turn on like radicals into like radicals by simplifying each individual radical whenever possible, right? So now we need to add the coefficient 4 plus 2, which is 6, and then 6 minus 3, that is going to be 3, a square root of 3. Final answer, all right? Okay, let's do another example. Very similar for letter B, but now look at the index. Notice the index in this case is 3. So we're looking for perfect cubes, right? So when we factor the number 24, we're going to look for one of the factors that is a perfect cube. We did this one exactly on the previous section. So that's 8 times 3. The number 8 happens to be a perfect cube. So break it up into 8 times 3 time plus, well, the cube root of 3, it's already in simplest terms. Okay, so let me break this up into two radicals, the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 3 plus 2 cube root of 3. Okay, let's keep simplifying this one, the cube root in this case, okay, let's highlight the perfect cubes and the with green and non-perfect cubes with purple. So the cube root of eight that we evaluated, this is two, cube root of three plus two, cube root of three. Combining like terms, we get four cube root of three. Okay, final answer. Okay. Let's do a very similar one. However, in this case, look at the indices. In this case, we're looking for the fifth root. We are looking for perfect fifths, so not perfect squares, not perfect cubes, not perfect fourths, perfect cubes, right? So 64 is not a perfect cube. The number 64 happens to be both a perfect fourth and a perfect square, right? In this case, I'm going to break up the number 64 into 32 times 2, right? Because in this case, the number 32, it's going to be a perfect fifth. Remember that one? That is 2 to the fifth power, okay? So... Let's write this as the fifth root of 32 times 2 minus 3 times the fifth root of 2. Okay, so I'm going to highlight with green the perfect fifth and I'm going to highlight with purple the non-perfect fifth. Okay, now I'm going to break this up into the fifth root of 32 times the fifth root of 2 minus 3 times the fifth root of 2. Okay, let's keep highlighting the perfect fifth and the non-perfect fifth. Okay, so the fifth root of 32, this will be 2 fifth root of 2 minus 3 fifth root of 2. Okay, now we're going to subtract the coefficients 2 minus 3, that is going to give us a negative 1 that we don't need to write, negative fifth root of 2. All right. Okay, let's look at letter D. Let's look at one more. Now, notice letter D, this one has combinations, right? Notice on the one hand, okay, we are not going to break anything up because if you look at the radicands, the radicand is a 5 and it's already in simplest form. There's nothing we can do about it, like taking a square root or a fifth root, etc., right? So, what we're going to do is highlight the indices. So, cube and cube. So, I'm going to highlight with blue 
the terms that have cube root and I'm going to highlight with yellow the terms that have square root. All right, and I'm going to combine like terms like combining 8x minus 7x, 3y minus 9y. As easy as that, but in this case, instead of having x and y, we are going to have cube root of 5 and square root of 5. So I'm going to add the coefficients. 8 minus 7, that's only 1. That's the cube root of 5. And 3 square root of 5. Minus 9 square root of 5, that is 3, minus 5, that is going to give us a negative 6. And that's about it, that's all we do. Combine like terms, all right? Letter 6 is a very, very similar situation, okay? I'm going to highlight with yellow the square roots. Notice they all have Z's, right? However, the first and the third have a square root, while the one in the middle, it's a perfect, it's a cube root, all right? Okay, so 6 minus 3, yellows with yellows, that is going to be 3 square root of C, right? And then just bring down the blue one, negative 2 cube root of Z. Right, and that's about it. That's all we do. Combining like terms, right? All right, what about letter F? Okay, letter F of F of fun, right? And that's where the fun begins, final, right? Okay, let's see. All right, let's look at each term at a time okay let's look at the indices of the radicals they are all square roots all right i guess we all agree with that they are all square roots okay however the radicands which is the quantities inside of each radical 3k 12k see how they're different in this case they're not the same so we need to work with a couple of them. In this case, for the 3k, there's nothing we can do about it. That's already in simplest terms. And the number for the number 12k, we need we can break it up into factors that at least one of them is a perfect square, right? So we can simplify and same over here for 18. I mean 48, right? We're gonna look for a factor 48 that is a perfect square. All right. Okay. What are we gonna do? Okay, we're going to keep the 3 times the root of 3k minus 5 times break up the number 12 into a fact into two factors in a way that one is a perfect square and the other one doesn't matter, right? So 4 times 3. 48, what about 48? We need one of this to be a perfect square well six times eight but that one in this case it's not going to work okay we need to find another way 12 times 4 okay 12 times 4 might work right however we can we can do it with a larger number that is a perfect square right what about 16 times 3 much better right So 9 times 16 times 3k, all right? Now, what's going to be the next step? The next step will be to highlight with green the perfect squares for the ones that we're working on and highlight the non-perfect squares. Notice k is to the first power. That's not enough power to go outside of the radical, right? So... Let's write this as 3 root of 3k minus 5 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3k plus 9 times the square root of 16 times the square root of 3k. 
Okay. Again, I'm going to highlight the green ones that are perfect square roots, and I'm going to highlight with purple ones the ones that are going to remain roots uh, that are not exact roots, right? So 3 root of 3k minus 5 times 2, which is the square root of 4, times root of 3k. And then 9 times the square root of 16, which is 4, times the square root of 3k, All right? And let's simplify this. Okay, 5 times 2, that's going to give us a 10. 9 times 4 is going to give us a 36. So let's keep writing this as 3 root of 3k minus 10 root of 3k plus 9 times 4, which is 36 root of 3k. All right. So notice now at this point we have the square root of 3k, the square root of 3k, the square root of 3k. We have like radicals. We are ready to just combine the coefficients 3 minus 10. That's going to give us negative 7 plus 36, negative 36 minus 7, that's going to be a total of 29 square root of 3k. So you might want to observe something, guys. Well, something typical, it is not always the case, right? But in, you might have noticed a very interesting pattern here, right? So typically, when we have a an additional subtraction of multiple radicals, right? Typically, we are looking to write all of the radicals in terms of the one that is given in simplest form, right? It's not always the case, but typically it's like this. Let's review the ones that we have done. For example, notice how here, right, we wrote everything in terms of this of this cube root of, of this fifth root of two, right? Fifth root of two, fifth root of two. Notice how in this case we ended up writing everything in terms of the cube root of three and the cube root of three, that is to turn everything into like radicals. Same here, we ended up writing everything in terms of the cube root of three. It's already highlighted, cube root of three and cube root of three, right? In order to combine like radicals again it's not always the case we will see one one case later all right let's do a similar one like letter f and this is letter g and this is uh this is a good one okay that's a good one okay all right Let's break up the 54 into factors that one of the factors, it's a perfect cube. So we did that one before on the previous section. That is 27 times 2. Okay. And then the number 2x, well, the number 2 is not a perfect cube. X doesn't have enough power to go outside, but Y will. But let's keep it like this for now. Okay. What about 128? 128 is not a perfect cube. However, we know 128 is 64 times 2. And 64, guys, observe the following. 64 happens to be a perfect cube. All right? 64 is a perfect cube. Okay. Now, let's break up this into the cube root of 27 times 2 times x times y cubed, okay? We're going to deal with the y cubed in almost on the next step. And then minus 5 times the cube root of 2xy cubed. There's really nothing to do on the second radical, right? So only the first one. And then plus y times the cube root of 27, no, not 27, that's 64, times 2, 
times x. Okay. All right, let's look at every single radical and let's determine whether we have perfect cubes, right? The 27 is a perfect cube, 2 is not a perfect cube, x is not, and y cubed is a perfect cube. On the second radical, right, the second radical, we are going to have only y cubed to be a perfect cube, not 2x. On the last radical, 64 is the only perfect cube. Now let's highlight with pink all the factors that do not form part of the perfect cubes. We are going to break up every single radical into the product of two, the product of a green radical and a purple radical. Okay. Now, this is going to be the cube root of 27y cubed times the cube root of 2x minus 5 times the cube root of y cubed times the cube root of 2x plus y times the cube root of 64 times the cube root of 2x okay let's highlight all the factors right here okay let's highlight the ones in green again let's stick to the colors the greens for the ones that are good to be evaluated as cube roots and with purples the ones that are not perfect cubes right so let's focus on the green ones only okay so the perfect cube of 27 is 3 right and the cube root of y cubed is simply y, so 3y times the cube root of 2x. Minus 5 times the cube root of y cubed is simply y, and times the cube root of 2x. Okay, And finally, the cube root of 64 is 4 times y, this will be 4 y times the cube root of 2x okay and now notice we have like terms like radicals right so the like radicals like terms are y cube root of 2x y cube root of 2x y cube root of 2x all we do is combine the radicals 3 minus 5 which is negative 2 plus 4 that's positive 2. So this is 2 times the cube root of 2x. And that's final answer for this guy. Okay. All right. Let's look at another example. Look at one more. Okay. Now we're looking for perfect fours. How do we know? Again, observe the index of the radical. It's a four root. It's a four root for both of them, right? Okay, the nice thing about it is that the number, the coefficients, the number 16, it's already a perfect four. That is two. And the number 81, it's a perfect four. It's three to the four power, right? Okay. However, we need to work a little bit with the powers of each variable, for example, right here, 6. So we need to determine, guys, whether we need to determine whether 6 is divisible by 4. And in this case, it fails, right? So let's write it down. Let's do it the same way we did it on the previous section. Is 6 divisible by 4? In this case, it fails. So we try one power below, which is 5. Is 5 divisible by 4? Right, highlight, highlight. Well, in this case, 5 is not divisible by 4, so we also fail to divide that, cross it out. 1 integer below, okay, that is 4. Okay, so 4 is divisible by 4. Right, I don't know what happened there. Okay, silly mistake. Okay, a uh, fourth root of 16 times a to the fourth power times a squared. Right, again, this 
4 plus 2 gives us back the number 6 over there, alright? Now, what about b? Let's look at the power of b, which is 7, is 7 divisible by 4? The answer is no, so cross it out and try one integer below. 6. Is 6 divisible? Well, we already saw that it is not, neither 5, and then until we get to 4, right? As we did on the previous variable for a. Okay, so we're going to get b to the 4th power times b cubed, right? Again, just to check that, 4 plus 3, add the powers to get back to 7. Okay. Now let's close the radical symbol and minus the fourth root of 81 a squared b cubed. All right, okay. Yes, we're ready to evaluate the cube root of 81, but I would like to do everything in the same step like I'm going to do here. So again, I'm going to highlight the perfect fourth, right, as, okay, something is going on here, let's see, yes, got it, okay, the 16 is a perfect fourth, a to the fourth is a perfect four, b to the fourth, it's a perfect fourth, and then highlight with pink the ones that are not perfect fourths, right, and on the second radical only 81 is a perfect fourth however a squared and b cubed are not perfect fourths so again i'm going to break this up into the product of two radicals the green radical and the purple radical okay so the fourth root of 16 a squared b to i mean a to the fourth b to the fourth times the fourth root of a squared b cubed minus the fourth root of 81 times the fourth root of a squared b cubed okay again let's keep Highlighting with greens, with green the ones that we can evaluate as perfect fourths, and with purple the ones that we cannot evaluate as perfect fourths, right? So the four root of 16 is 2. The four root of a to the 4 is just a. The four root of b to the 4 is just b times the fourth root of a squared b cubed. And the 4 root of 81, which is 3, times the 4th root of a squared b cubed. Okay, and in this case, we are done. Well, we're not done yet. Wait a minute. We're almost done with this one, right? Now, unlike the other problems, we seem to have like terms, but not quite. Notice something. Something we might want to notice. The second term has a fourth root of a squared b cubed, right? This one has also the fourth root of a squared b cubed. However, it also has the factor of a b. So we cannot combine these together unless we have the a b multiplying Here, right between 3 and the root of 4 then we can combine this together however all we can do here is factor out the radical term so let me unhighlight the yellow ones I'm going to highlight only what I am about to factor out right I'm gonna factor the root of 4 right I mean, the, the 4 root of a square b cubed and the 4 root of a square b cubed. So, the 4th root of a squared b cubed times 
2ab minus 3. Okay, and that's final answer for us. Okay. So that's the end of the, of the second topic, right? Simplifying unlike radicals. Now let's multiply radical expressions. Okay. So what are we going to do here? Essentially use the distributive property, right? That is um, simply distribute or use FOIL, right? Okay. So this is what we do here. I'm going to multiply the square root of 3 times 5 and the square root of 3 times the square root of 30. In the first case we get the following 5 times the square root of 3 plus square root of 3 times the square root of 30 and this is going to take us back to the previous section in which we write again the product of the radicals as the radical of a product. 5 square root of 3 plus the square root of 3 times 30, right? I know that you can do it right away and get a 90, but how about doing one step at a time so we can illustrate these properties of radicals, the one that I'm going to write down here, just so you can see what are we doing. We are writing the square root of A, the square root of B, okay, the nth root rather, equals the nth root of A times B. That's essentially what I'm doing for these guys, right? Now, from here, we get the following. We get that 5 root of 3 plus 3 times 30, which is 90. Okay, the number square root of 90, we can simplify it a bit further, right? Because 90 is the same as saying 9 times 10. And it turns out that 9 is a perfect square, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we are going to have 5 root of 3 plus the square root of 9 times 10, right? Notice we went from 3 times 30 to 9 times 10 in a way that it works to simplify one of the perfect squares. Okay, so 5 root of 3 plus the square root of 9 times the square root of 10. In this case, again, let's simplify the perfect square. Let's simplify the non-perfect square from the term that we are simplifying. And the square root of 9 turns out being a 3. So 5 root of 3 plus 3 root of 10. Okay, and that's final answer. In this case, we call it a final answer because we cannot combine these radicals because this is square root of 3, this is square root of 10. These are, this is, these are unlike radicals, right? All right, let's look at the next one, letter B. So what are we going to do here? Root of 5 times root of 7 and root of 5 times 1. Okay, let's do a 2 at a time. Root of 5 times root of 7, that's the same as root of 5 times root of 7. Okay, plus root of 5 times 1, that is 1 times root of 5 or simply root of 5. And then the second part of the foiling, negative 6 times root of, negative root, negative square root of 6 times root of 7, and negative square root of 6 times 1. So on the first case, we're going to have a negative square root of 6 times square root of 7, and negative square root of 6 times 1, which is simply negative square root of 6. Okay, let's combine this, the product of these two radicals as the radical of a product, square root of 5 times 7 plus the square root of 5 minus the square root of 6 times 7, which is 42. No, wait, wait a minute, not yet, not yet 42, just 6 times 7. We're going to do the 42 on the next step and then minus the square root of 6. Okay, finally, 
we're going to have the square root of 5 times 7, which is 35, plus the square root of 5, minus the square root of 42, minus the square root of 6. Okay? In this case, this is our final answer, right? Which is... And the reason why this is a final is a final answer is because look at all the radicals, right? Look at all the radicals. Okay, they are all square roots, right? That's correct. They all have the same index, but in order to, for these to be like radicals, we must have the same quantity inside of the radicand, the radical. That is the radicand, and in this case, none of them are the same. 35, 5, 42, 6, so they're all different, right? So that's final answer, right? Okay. Let's do another one. Okay, so let's foil these guys. So this seven root of X times three root of X. Seven root of X times negative root of five. Let's do the seven root of x times 3 root of x all right minus 7 root of x times root of 5 on the second part of the foiling 5 times 3 root of x okay so plus 5 times 3 root of x and finally, 5 times negative root of 5. That is going to give us a negative 5 root of 5. All right, let's combine this uh, one at a time. Okay, so what are we going to do here? So 7 times 3, this is going to be a 21. And we are going to have essentially the square root of x quantity squared, right? Or rather, okay, let's let me do this in a different way. Okay, I'm gonna have the square root of x times itself, that's the square root of x times x, which is x squared, right? Okay, let me do one step at a time, that'll be better. Okay, square root of x times x, okay minus 7 times the square root of x times 5, which is simply 5x. There's nothing else to simplify any further, plus 5 times 3, which is 15 square root of x, and minus 5 root of 5. There's nothing really to simplify there. Okay, what about these guys right here? This x times x is the same as x squared, all right? So this will be 21 times the square root of x squared minus 7 root of 5x plus 15 root of x minus 5 root of 5. Okay. Now the only thing we can do is simplify the square root of x squared. Notice this x squared is a perfect square, so let's just simplify that to 21x minus 7 square root of 5x plus 15 root of x minus 5 root of 5. And in this case, this is final answer because none of these radicals are considered like radicals because even though well, at least the, the last three terms, they they all have an index of 2, right? The one I'm highlighting, the invisible 2. But notice the quantities inside of each radical. They're not the same, so therefore we can combine those together. So that's final answer, all right? Okay, let's do another one. So more often than not, you are going to find something like letter D. Okay, letter D, you will have some sum or difference 
of the quantities to the second power. So the first step would be to write this as the quantity for root of 3 minus 1 times itself. And then FOIL. Okay. 4 root of 3 times itself and 4 root of 3 times negative 1. So what are we going to get? 4 root of 3 times 4 root of 3 minus 4 root of 3 times negative 1. That's just going to be negative 4 root of 3. And then on the second part of the FOIL, negative 1 times 4 root of 3, negative 1 times itself, negative 1. Be careful with signs there. Okay, so this will be negative 4 root of 3. And negative 1 times negative 1 equals positive 1. All right, what are we going to do here? What are we going to get? So I'm going to multiply 4 times 4, which will give me the number 16, times the square root of 3 times itself 3, right? When I combine this radical with that radical using the product rule. And then notice here we have a couple of like radicals. These two guys right here are like radicals. Negative 4 root of 3 minus 4 root of 3. They both have the same index and the same radicands. So minus 8 root of 3. And then plus 1. All right. Now, let's simplify the first term, the, the radical part. So 16 times the square root of 3 times 3, which is 9, minus 8 root of 3, okay? Which in this case, well, the square root of 9 happens to be a perfect square, right? And the square root of 9 equals 3. So 16 times 3 equals, well, what, just 16 times 3 minus 8 root of 3, all right? And what are we going to get? 16 times 3, which equals 48. Oh, I forgot this plus 1 right here. All right, 48 minus 8 root of 3 plus 1. Okay, the only thing we need to do now is combine these like terms. This integer with this integer. Right, so 48 plus 1 is going to be... 49 minus 8 root of 3. And that's final answer for this exercise. Okay. Let's do a couple more. Letter E. All right, I would like you to observe this form. Um, you might remember this form when we went over that chapter on factoring, right? Remember? that product of conjugate binomials, right? When we were multiplying polynomials, okay? Notice the form, okay? You might want to observe this, a minus b, a plus b, all right? Hopefully that rings a bell, right? Hopefully that rings a bell, okay? And that was the same as saying something a squared minus b squared, right? In other words, what we have here, it's a fact, it's a factor form of a difference of squares, right? So let's go ahead and factor out that different, well, just uh, foil that difference of squares, right? And turn it into difference of squares. So we're gonna write this as something squared minus something squared, okay? All right, so we are going to have the square root of 2x and 5, okay? Notice something. Uh, here in this case, you might want to just cancel 
the radical symbol with the square, right? Why can we do that? Because I didn't do it on the previous exercises, right? But I'm doing it here, I'm showing it here. The reason why we can do that is because, so we have the square root of 2x and the quantity squared. So this is the same as saying 2x to the one half and then to the second power, right? And then we have the power of another power that is 2x to the two halves, right? One half times two is two halves, but two halves reduces to to one, all right? But do we really need to put that one? We don't really need to put that one, right? So this is just two x. So in this case, that's why I'm just writing this two x only minus now. What if we had it on the other hand? Okay, let me erase this. What if, I'm not going to do all the steps again, but what if we had the cube root of 2x, the whole quantity to the third power? All we can do just cancel the cube with the cube root and write the 2x. The same if we had the seventh root of 2x, the whole quantity to the seventh power. When we have the same power as the index, they cancel each other and we get the same to x only right all right so this is why we can just cross out this two with the square root right the square cancel the square root okay so 2x but what is five times okay five square what is that five square be careful because i've seen this many times okay when you run into a situation like this i'm going to show you a meme here that I added that to help you help you out understanding. Okay. okay. I'm gonna put it here. Okay, this is a, a meme uh, that a student from my Math 60 class sent me uh, what was that a year ago when we were looking at this section exactly right so five squared is not the same as five times two right so five squared equals 25 all right and that's final answer in this case because we only have 2x minus 25 and that's we don't have any like terms anymore okay all right, let's look at letter F. What about a situation in which we have cube roots? Can we have the same? Yes, of course. We do the same, foil, foil. So we are gonna have the cube root of X times itself the cube root of X. And then the cube root of X times seven, that's seven cube root of X x and then on the other hand what are we going to have negative 3 root of negative 3 cube root of x and then negative 3 times 7 that's 21 that's negative in fact negative 21 Okay, this doesn't this look a little bit slopey. Let me write it down again. Cube root of, what was that, x, okay. Okay, let's simplify this. Here I'm gonna write the product of two radicals as the radical of a product x times x. And then seven times the cube root of x minus 3 times the cube root of x, you might want to observe that these are like terms, these are like radicals in other words, because those two radicals have both the same index and the same radicand, so 7 minus 3 is the same as 4. Okay, and then minus 21. And inside of the radical of the, on the first term, all we do is 
multiply x times x, that's x squared. Plus 4 times the cube root of x minus 21. Final answer. All right. And let's do the last example, letter G. Okay, letter G, again, it's going to be very similar as a couple examples ago, like, uh, yeah, three or three examples ago. We are going to write this as the square root of x minus 3 plus 5. And times square root of x minus 3 plus 5. Okay, I would like to mention something here very, very important. Sometimes we are in a hurry writing these expressions, writing these answers, whether we are on a quiz, an exam, or we're running out of time on an assignment, right? Be careful. Notice this 5 right here doesn't belong to the inside of the radical, right? So when you write this by hand, be sure to enclose the x minus 3 only, enclose the x minus 3 only inside of the radical, and be sure to leave enough space so when you read this on further steps, you don't think this 5 belongs to the inside because that's a, that's a lot when you're writing all together, when you don't write it neatly and nicely, that leads to a lot of silly mistakes in the simplification of this example so I will I don't want you to fall in those uh, in those silly mistakes okay so that's my advice all right let's let's distribute the square root of x minus 3 times itself and the square root of x minus 3 times 5 this is going to give us well that's not going to be enough space I'm going to do it here yes yeah, the problem looks ugly but it's not going to be that ugly as it looks Okay, so the square root of x minus 3 times itself is the same as quantity squared, right? Well, actually, let me write it as multiplied by itself first. Why not? Then the square root of x minus 3 times 5, that's plus 5 times the square root of x minus 3. Plus 5 times the square root of x minus 3, which is, and finally, 5 times itself, which is 25. So we're going to have the square root of x minus 3 times itself, that's quantity squared, plus in this case, notice we have like terms, right? 5 root of x minus 3 plus itself, right? In this case, we can combine this because we have both the same index and the same radicand, x minus 3. So it's going to be 10 square root of x minus 3 and plus 25. All right, what are we going to do? Remember what I mentioned earlier? We can cross out this square with this radical because they are the same number, right? There is an invisible 2, so we can cancel because the square cancel the square root. So this is x minus 3 plus 10 root of x minus 3 plus 25. So all we do is combine like terms. In this case, just these two integers, 25 minus 3, which is going to give us x plus 22, plus 10 times the square root of x minus 3. And that is final answer. And guys, this is the end of the section and at the same time the end of chapter, so the end of chapter 7. Okay, so we will soon start chapter 8 on in which we will study quadratic equations and their graphs, right? In the meantime, I'll uh, see you on the next video, okay? Bye-bye.